Assalamu alaikum family. This is your brother Malcolm Flex TV from Changing the Black Narrative. And if you would like to join on to the Nation of Islam and accept your own and be yourself, please send me an email at malcolmflex19 at gmail.com. And if you would like a subscription to the Final Call newspaper, you can also go to finalcall.com because the Final Call newspaper has been within the black community for years and has changed and saved a lot of lives. It has saved minds, for example. And if you would like to hear the latest lectures and webcasts by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and his students, the students of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, you can also go to NOI Org. So if you would like to accept your own and be yourself, I will do my best to direct you to your local mosque and nearest study group. This is your brother, Malcolm Flex TV. Peace and Nasa. Assalamu alaikum. Peace to the family. Peace to the family. How y'all doing? We live. We alive with another show. With another show. It's supposed to be a dynamic show. All praises due to Allah. Um, this is the Black American Indians on trial. We are waiting. We are waiting for our special guests, uh, for our, our big brother YK the Truth. Um, I sent the brother the link, so hopefully he he's Checks the link out, but we are definitely live for another show. And um, also, if you didn't get a chance, family, go ahead and read the description. I specifically wrote in the description. Disclaimer. This video was not intended to be offensive, disrespectful, or making mockery of anyone. This is a scholarly, well put together presentation from a brother who has spent a lot of time in the community and has sent, uh, spent a lot of hours on the subject. Many of us have heard the case made by the Black Aboriginal community that everything we have been told was a lie and have been presented with alternative facts and arguments. So we would like to examine and interrogate the evidence. History is best qualified to reward our research, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, right? So um, this is going to be a great, episode. And uh, today I will be introducing the brother that has been in the community for a while. Um, this brother is one of the people who was in instrumental in exposing um, somebody in our community that is uh, that that was grifting off of our community, uh, Young Pharaoh, um, back like back before Young Pharaoh blew up and a lot of people knew who that brother was. This brother was the one who was the one who told us all what it really was. And uh, he's been in the community for a minute teaching. Um, and on this particular subject, this particular subject about, you know, um, the aboriginals and we've always been here. There's never been any slave ships. You know, it was all a lie. This brother has spent many hours. He got many hours of video footage on YouTube debunking this claim, you know, and, I was like, what better person to hold a presentation on this subject than this brother? You know what I mean? And um, so I want to introduce this brother. This is my big brother. I really appreciate this brother uh, a lot. I thank him for, for coming on the show. And uh, he's he's waiting. And we're going to bring the brother on without further ado. We're going to bring our brother to the stage. All praises due to Allah. Shout out to my brother, one care the truth. Peace, um, brother Flex. I appreciate you for having me on here. Salute appreciate to you, me. man. Mm -hmm. And um, peace to the chat. And hopefully, we can have a good show today, tonight. All praises due to Allah. All praises due to Allah, man. So we gonna have a fire dynamic show. This brother is no slouch in any sense of the word. This brother is a uh, very professional, very scholarly in what he does. Um, I've been watching this brother for maybe like 2017. 2016, 2017, somewhere around that time. And 
Um, his scholarship is nothing less than impressive, you know, especially dealing with this subject, this topic on, you know, um, the black aboriginals, right? So, um, yes, without further ado, um, I'm going to let allow my brother to host and uh, share his screen, and I'm going to let the brother take over from here. So let me go ahead and do that for the brother. Give me one second. And um and he let him let him do his thing. Can you can you share a screen on your side or do I have to give you permission? Yeah, um I could I see it, I can do it. Okay, go ahead, black man. All right, can you guys hear me? Can you can you see the um can you see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, you won't, you so won't the name. Yeah, it, um, yeah, did was you able to blow it up? Yeah, let me try to blow it up. I want you to, to do your thing solo. Probably just I'm gonna back out. <clears throat> let me know when you're ready. Yeah, we ready. All right. So the name of this presentation is Black Indians on Trial. Recently, Kanye West, you know, went live. He had one of his rants. And one of his claims is that we were Black and, and we were Indian. Excuse me. He said we were Indian. How many of you, your grandmothers said you had Indian in you? So now this is going to have even more people claiming to be indigenous to America. But as you remember, four years back, Kanye West had his father on all of his acres. And his father said to him, he said, all of these acres are from a black man. So <clears throat> that goes to show you that even Kanye West's father knew that he's a black man. All right. So we're going to talk about it. Are the black people in America today, are they indigenous to the Americas? Now, th there's a thing where they say, we're classified. We're they were misclassified, and Negro means Negro is really an Indian. So we're going to look at the etymology of the word Negro. 1550s member of a black skin race of Africa. It, clearly, it says Africa. It doesn't say America. From Spanish or Portuguese Negro, black. From Latin Negrum, nominative Niger. So that's Nigeria. Black, dark. So we know that the word Negro is speaking about an African person. So anytime you hear, you see the word Negro in these senses, in these narratives, they are taught, they are in reference to a person of African descent. Now we look at the word African American. Clearly, it's African, right? Now this is from. A 1864 source, and it's speaking about the African slave trade from the 15th to the 18th century. They speak about Negro land. So there's even a place in Africa called Negro land. And it says clearly the Negroes from Africa. Let me blow it up for you guys. It says the Negroes from Africa. So we know that to be in order to be a Negro, you're from Africa. Now, this is a map of Negro land, and it's the Guinea coast. This is where my peoples come from. I did my genealogy. I did my DNA, and my people are from West Africa. Black. What does it mean to be black? Black, the meaning dark-skinned person African. So even the word black means African. So when you look at these census records, and you see black there, they are talking about an African person of African descent, not an indigenous person. All right. Now, there's a, there's something called the Black Belt. This is from 1870s. And it's literally a community, an African population. This is across the U.S. South with the heaviest African population. It's called the Black Belt. So we know black means African. Now, when a lot of us do our genealogy, we have ancestors 
who served in the Civil War. You know, they had to serve in it. But in order to serve in it, something was passed, and it was called the Militia Act of 1864. Now, what does the what does the Militia Act do? What is it? What was it for? It says, Section 13, and be it further enacted that when any man or boy of African descent who by the laws of any state shall owe service or labor to any person who during the present rebellion. So basically, this is for African people. It gave them the right to fight in these wars. Okay. Let me let me keep reading because I don't want to, you know, I want to give you a real scholarship. So I'm going to read it all. So it says, and be it further enacted that when any man or boy of African descent who by the laws of any state shall owe service or labor to any person during the present rebellion has levied war or has borne arms against the United States or adhere to their enemies by giving them aid and comfort shall render any such service as is provided for in this act. He, his mother and his children shall forever thereafter be free. Any law, usage or custom whatsoever to the contrary, notwithstanding provided that the mother, wife and children of such man or boy of African descent. So there's laws that gave African people the right to fight in these wars. So that means that you, if you have any ancestors in a genealogy, you got civil war, you see them records, pensions, um, you know, the infantry that they fought in, just know that they had to go through the militia act. All right, let's keep going down. See, here goes another one. 54 Regiment, Massachusetts Volunteers, composed of men of African descent. <clears throat> In January of 1863, Secretary of War Staten finally gave John A. Andrews, the abolitionist governor of Massachusetts, <clears throat> excuse me, authorization to form regiments that can include persons of African descent. You see that? Excuse me, guys. Let me let me write and grab a drink real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me. This is gonna be good. <clears throat> the governor had long been an advocate of raising black regiments from the free black population. Like most abolitionists, he felt the surest path to citizen for black Americans was for them to be allowed to fight and die for their freedom. See, you got a lot of um, so-called indigenous Americans who think that because our ancestors were enslaved, that means that we come from slaves. Being enslaved don't make you a slave. And fighting for your freedom means that you didn't go out like a punk. You fought for it. So every time you hear them say, well, I don't come from a slave. Your peoples come from my peoples. But my peoples were enslaved and they fought for their freedom. Nothing was given to them freely. So we got to get that out of our heads that we were slaves. We was punks. No, when we had them guns, we went to war. My ancestors fought for your, your freedom. Even your ancestors fought for um, our freedom. Uh, many of you who are in this chat, has ancestors who fought for America. So anytime you hear somebody say, well, you from Africa, why don't you just go back to Africa? Well, we have right to America as well because our ancestors shed blood. You see what it says? Black Americans was for them to be allowed to fight and die for their freedom in their country. So this is our country just as much as it is the white man's because we fought and died just as well as they did. Now, this is my this is my great grandfather. His name is, was John Seabury. And if you look at his World War I registration card, he was of African black. So this is my um African ancestry. Because I'm not just going to talk, because you know, a lot of 
so-called um, aboriginals, they talk, but they never want to share the genealogy. That's it's just right. all talk. It's all talk. So now I'm going to show you guys my genealogy. Now, this is for the doubters because I'm connected genetically with these people, right? This is his registration card. Now, this is another proof that we are not Indians. Now, this is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is from Black Indians in the United States. And you see Mrs. Amos Chapman, her daughter, all Southern Cheyenne, and an unidentified girl of African-American descent. So clearly, we are of African descent. It's too many sources for you to believe that. Now, this is from my census, 1880s. This is my fourth great grandfather. His name was Richard Reed, and his parents were born in Africa. His mother and father was born in Africa. So I'm giving you my genealogy. This is my second great grandfather. He fought in the Civil War. And uh, the unit was the 686 USC Infantry, Mississippi, right? Now we're gonna, this, I'm connected genetically for the doubters. Now this is from a book called Freedom by Sword. And let's talk, let's talk about that infantry. And it says the 86, formerly the 14th Corps d'Afrique. So it clearly shows you that these are people of African descent. All, all throughout genealogy, you're going to see the word African descent. This is my third great grandfather. His name was Marvis Worthy Verdia, and he fought with Harriet Tubman and freed 700 slaves at the Cumbahee Raid. If y'all seen the movie Harriet, he was one of those soldiers that attended to help free the slaves in South Carolina. This wow. is my yes, this is my genetics for the doubters. So you see, I'm connected by blood. Now we, we're gonna talk about the Cumberhee River in the raid. And it says right here, he took same book, Freedom by Sword. He took 300 men on a raid 25 miles up the Combahee River. A Confederate inspector later condemned the defenders. Confusion of counsel, indecision, and great tardiness of movement that allowed Montgomery men to free 725 slaves in one day and return them with the Port Royal. So it shows you the sec. This is the infantry right here. Um, gosh. And it says the second South Carolina was not only the black, was not the only black regiment organizing for the service at that time. On January 26, 1863, Governor John A. Andrews of Massachusetts received authority to enlist as three-year volunteers, persons of African descent, organized into separate corps. So you can see that these, my ancestors were of African descent. Now, this is my um, ancestry results from ancestry, my DNA results. And as you can see, I'm 20% Nigeria. I mean, Cameroon, Congo, West two, Western Bantu peoples, excuse me, Nigeria, Mali, Ivory Coast, and Ghana, Scott, 6% Scotland, Senegal, Benin, and Togo, and only 2% Indigenous American. Halito to my Indigenous brothers. I'm 2%. But as you can see, Majority of my DNA is of African descent. The word Blackamore, when you look at the etymology of the word Blackamore, it's a dark-skinned person, black-skinned African race. So everywhere you go, it's saying, it's letting you know who these people are. So what would give us the, any idea to claim indigenous American? It makes no sense. And when I look at, um, rest in peace to Renuko Rashidi, he said that we would rather be called turds in the toilet than to be called Africans. Like people don't want to be called Africans or associate with Africans. Even when you read the autobiography of Malcolm X, he speaks a lot about how even at his times, people didn't want to associate him, him, you know, themselves with being African. And his father was a Garveyite. 
you know, so his father was trying to get black people to go back to Africa. So and now there's also a conspiracy that if you're if you're from if you claim it, if you're a Pan-African, you work for the government and you was a CIA. This is one of their biggest myths. Now, I'm going to debunk that. At Malcolm X time, his father was a Garveyite and wanted to get black people to go back to Africa. If he was a CIA, right? Why was they trying to stop that? Why was they trying to stop? They would have just let him gather as many people to go back to Africa because they are tell us to go back to Africa. The white person, excuse me, but they don't really want us to because then who's going to build this country? Who's going to be the slaves? So they are tell you all day, go back to Africa, but they don't really want that. Right. Now, this is my um my aunt my african ancestry test and it says below is a copy of your y chromosome polymorphisms used in an analysis you have inherited this segment of dna through your father father and it has been passed on consistently from father and son over the last 500 to 2000 years our scientists compared your y chromosome polymorphisms to those from people around the world and found a 100% match to samples from the Igbo people in Nigeria today. Your sequence similarity score of 100% reflects our level of confidence in the accuracy of your match. So not only do you have the ancestry, you also have the African ancestry that deals with your Y chromosome. Now, everybody knows about Juneteenth. There's, it's a holiday. But who was the holiday for? Now, this is from the Library of Congress. On June 17, 2021, President Joseph R. Biden signed into the law the bill that established Juneteenth, National Independence Day, June 19th as a legal public holiday. Juneteenth commemorates June 19th, 1865, the date Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas and delivered general order number three, announcing the end of legalized slavery in Texas. Historically, it has been a holiday celebrated by people of African descent in the United States, as well as people in Canada, Jamaica, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, and other countries throughout the world. Juneteenth is also a symbolic date representing the African-American struggle from freedom and equality and a celebration of family and community. So we know that Juneteenth is a holiday for people of African descent. Everywhere you go, it would be hard. Let's say I wanted to believe I was an indigenous. It would be hard for me to do it because everywhere I go, I'm going to see African to the point where I'm going to have to start make believe in these things and denying it because it's so much. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 was rooted in the struggle of Af Americans of African descent. This is from the Library of Congress to obtain basic rights of citizenship in the nation. Anti-slavery initi initiatives has gradually abolished the peculiar institution in the Northern states by the 1830s, but free blacks were not accorded full citizenship rights. So we know the civil rights was for people of African descent. Now this is from American Negroes, a handbook. And it says one group, the African Negroes came not of their own will, but as slaves. Although slavery was a common practice at the time, it was strange to find it among the freedom-loving peoples of the New World. So this is a 1883 wow. handbook, right? And this is a sermon from Joseph um, Wild, Joseph Wild, and he speaks about it. Everywhere you go, they speak about slavery. Wow, who pulling up old books and everything? Let's go. Yeah. Look what he said. He said, I believe God intended Africa for the colored race and he will turn a good account their past slavery and bring good even to our colored friends of it. So what the reason why I'm bringing up these books is because 
we trying to find the words colored, black, all the things that we look for when we do our genealogy and pull mm -hmm. up those records. Mm -hmm. So what's the best place to go than the people that was there at that time? Right. So if you can't, you can't say, oh, these people was misclassified when they knew who they was talking about. So wow. you can't, you can't, you can't do it. Everywhere you go, it's going to let you know colored is African, Negro is African, black is African. So how can, how, when does it, how can you put the Indian in there? You can't do it. Bro, I see the finesse. I see yes, the finesse. Okay. Okay. You can't do it. You got the Book of Negroes is a series of documents listing persons of African ancestry who were evacuated from the United States at the end of the Amer American Revolution. This is 1783. Then you got the, the um, slave narratives. My father was Abram Brown and my mother's name was Lucy Brown. He said they were slaves of Dr. Arthur Gordon Rose. My grandfather and grandmother were grown when they came from Africa and were man and wife in Africa. So we got slave narratives. We got so we got another one. I is 81 years old. I was born up the watery river close to Great Falls. My master was Osmond Barber. My mistress was named Miss Elizabeth, her wife of Mars Osmond. My pappy was named Jacob. My mammy went by the name Jemima. They both come from Africa where they were born. So everywhere you go, you see African. You can't escape it. Then this is from a narrative of life and labors of Reverend G.W. Offley. This is a colored man. So this is from the 1860s. He said, I do, sir, that they were not half so devilish in Africa before you whites went there and commenced destroying their cattle. So basically the white people did the same thing that they did to the Indians. We're going to go over there, right. take, try to destroy their buffaloes. Then we're going to put this native a tribe against this native tribe and call confusion. Then we're going to take their land. It's called destroy and conquer. So, you know, um, how, what's that saying, Brother Lex, when you um put one against the other? That's it, right? Cause confusion? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you correct. put one person against the other and then they fight and then you come and try to Divide be the hero. Conquer. Divide, Divide and conquer. There conquer. we go. Divide and conquer. That's that's the name of the game. So even the reverend knew that the whites went there and commenced to destroying their cattle and made one tribe believing that it was their neighbor and set them to fighting amongst themselves. And then you would take them that were captured. And that's the way you have brought blacks to this country and made yourselves rich by the infernal system of selling Negroes and your own in illegitimate children. So they was even selling the mixed breeds. And you know, a lot of times, this is where our grandmother get that, well, she got high cheekbones and long straight hair, but that came from the white woman. You get what I'm, so they thinking, well, because yeah. you got light skin, and you got long hair that you had Indian in you, but you would rather be called an Indian than it's no, say that your, your, your um, great grandmother was raped by a white man. So that's what they did. So wow. let me, let me, yeah. And then we got the Congress. This is a um, 57th Congress first section, and it speaks of the Yamases. And it clearly said he is hot now. This is uh, somebody try to say that the Yamases were black, you know, that they were Negroes. But this right here says that mm -hmm. they were Africans. It says, excuse me, <clears throat> he is, hi, let me drink some more water. Sorry. Yeah, we got it. <clears throat> Family, this, it this says, is he is high go. authority, appreciate it. Um, he is high authority. And he says that the Yamases Indians were Negroes. What were known afterwards as the fierce of the Indian tribes of the South, the well-known Yamsees Indians were Africans. Now, this right here, um, Flex, is going to really 
just kill the whole black Indians. Cause right now this is black Indians on this is black Indians on trial, man. Y'all on trial. Let's go. Let's go. So now Let's this go. is from five years expedition against the revolted Negroes of the Serenam. And this is from 1796. Now this puts both Indians and Negroes in the same narrative. Now it says the sloth has a the sloth has a soft and squeaky voice like a young cat. It is different in generative parts from all other quadrupeds and is eaten with avidity by the Indians and Negroes. So clearly, Indians and Negroes are not the same. Now let's keep going because we got more of them. Now let's look at this one. Now it says right here. It says Europeans are exposed in this country. Prevents them from keeping late hour nits for them, souls for them. While these girls who are sometimes Indians, sometimes mulattoes, and often Negroes. So you already see that mm. Indian, mulatto, and Negro, Indian and Negro is not the same. It's not the same. Now, let's mm. go to another one. Right. Now, let's go to another one. It says, by this, this now he, these are white people that's envious of, because you know, the natives had melanin too. Like they had color too. But that don't mean we're the same because this is the look of ship that right. they do. They say, well, um, the white people said that they, they seen people of color. But just because you have color don't mean you have the same genetically. Now it says, by this, I was always cool and clean. Besides, there is a kind of pleasure in rambling naked when the occasion will permit it, which I always envied the Indians and Negroes. So the white man is saying he envied the Indians and Negroes, mm. and of which only those few can have any idea who have tried to experiment in the light and the following these rules which kind nature, so it's talking about nature, by an unerring precept has prescribed. I daily use a cheering glass of wine, having first hung it a few fathoms underwater, which made it much cool. So he, so they couldn't even enjoy the heat like the Indians and the Negroes. That's great. Right. Now we're going to and speak right, about... Real quick, and real quick, uh -huh, brother. Okay, just, yeah. just, 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 I just want to give, I just want to give y'all the context of what brother is talking about because on YouTube and Twitter, they are saying the argument is being made that all of us are Native Americans. They are saying that the slave trade never happened. There are no slave ships, none of that. So that, that's why the brother is giving, giving this presentation to debunk all of that. So if you don't understand the context of where he's coming from this is why he's doing what he's doing to let you know that there's a distinction historically between indians and negroes so i want to cut you off brother but i just wanted to give those who don't know what's going on that context before they just start commenting anything right i appreciate it yeah and, and, and we're going to be back in this book now this is going to put the copper colored claim to bed because they love to say the, um, the Indians copper color or we're copper colored, right? Now it says right here that the Caribbees, the Arawaks, the Akiwas, the Tariwas, the Raras, and the Pianacatas, besides which these are a great many other whose manner are unknown to us. All these Indians are in general of a copper color, while the Negroes of Africa that live under the same degree of latitude are perfectly black, and which, however, inconceivable at first, is easily accounted for when one considers that the first viz, the American Indians in Guyana, are constantly refreshed by the cooling sea breeze or easterly wind that blows between the tropics, and that those who dwell in Terry Firma in Peru on the west coast enjoy that same easterly breeze. 
still kept cool by the great chains of inland mountains over which it passes, in which their summits perpetually covered over with snow, while the second viz, the inhabitants of Africa who live south of the river Senegal get the same east wind rather heated than cooled by the prodigious quantity of inland burning savannas and sandy deserts mm. over which it passes. These are the most plausible causes why the Americans are copper, color, or red, and the inhabitants of Africa called Negroes. You see it? It says inhabitants of Africa are called Negroes are black. This, the one being more burnt by the sun's heat than the other, rather than because they are two distinct sort of people. There being, in my opinion, but on set one set of people on the globe who differ with each other only according to the soil and climate in which they live. So it's letting you know right there that African and Negroes are not the same. They are not the same. Mm. It says, a happy people, I call them still, whose peace, hold on, the food is done. I'm sorry, yeah. No, you good. Come on, family. Pay yeah, attention. Know, All right, let me Pay get it. Yep. Yes, sir. And it says, where was I? A happy people. I know perfectly well, Viz, that the native Indians of Guyana possess as few vices as any set of people existing under the sun and are in their morals but little better of people existing under the sun. And um, I, please guys, check out this book because the author is a white person, but he's very unbiased. Like he's like envious mm -hmm. of, the, of those people. And he actually speaks and lets people know that Africans are not inferior to Europeans. He says it's no way that they are. So check wow. this out, it's the five year expedition against the revolted Negroes of the Saranam. Now, let me, they, they speak about different hair textures with the respect to the shape of the African Negroes. It is from the head to the foot, certainly different from the European mold, though not, in my opinion, in any degree inferior, prejudice being laid aside. Mm -hmm. So the looks, if we're not inferior to white people. And there's a group of white people that wanted us to believe that because we had melanin that we were um, less than others when it's the melanin in us that protects us from the sun. Like, how can you be ashamed of something like that? Like I told my daughter, I said, you see that color right there? Right. That's your armor. You, you love that. How can you hate something that mm. keeps you alive? That's like, beautiful. how can you hate? That's, that's I, I just don't get it. You can't hate something that keeps you alive. That's that's similar to your God. A word to my colored friends. Now, this is from oh. a narrative of the life and labors of the Reverend G.W. Offley, a color man and local preacher. He said, a word to my colored friends. It is often said that we are degraded people in this country as well as in Africa, but we consent to the charge. Let us look at the word degradation, excuse me. Walker says it means deprivation of office or dignity, degeneracy to lessen, mm -hmm. to diminish. I cannot see that his explanation has anything to do with the charge against us in a moral sense of the term when properly taken into consideration. If we only number one, six part. <clears throat> so basically, he's letting you know that the colored is the African. So everywhere you go, you're going to see color. It's going to be in reference to African. You're going to see black. They're going to be talking about African. So when you do your genealogy, it's going to take you to Africa. Always. Now it says, mm. the journal of down. This is from John Newton, 1750 to 1754. And it says, all Negroes are Africans. Today, there are many Negroes in America and West Indies, some thousands in Great Britain, who
who are descended from the slaves taken by the white men from Africa. They have black or dark skins, usually black woolly hair, rather flat noses, and rather big lips. We opt to think that Africans of Newton days were savages without any laws of civilization, but it, that is not so. Most of what we know of them and their surroundings is from a few descriptions and drawings by white men. These were sometimes wild guesses for instances, we know that there are no tigers in Africa. We know too that animals follow each other by scent. But one English man who went to Sierra Leone in the 18th century wrote, the country is full of tigers, leopards, and ravenous beasts, which are perpetually fighting. But the tigers have generally the better. And for that reason, the leopard drags his tail when hunted by the tiger to wipe away the impressions of his feet on the sandy ground that the tiger. So basically they lying. A lot of those mm. descriptions is lying. They lying. So when you hear Malcolm X say that every time they speak about Africa, they talk about jungles and just the worst thing that you could ever think about when you think about Africa. Mm -hmm. Even me, Mom's I'm talking about right. Let me take you back to the 90s. This is the 90s. And I'm a kid and I'm watching TV and I'm seeing these African children with a belly full. I mean, from hunger, it just blown up, looking sick, flies all over their body, flying around. And this is the image, the first image that I'm seeing of African. I'm going I go to school. That. You remember that, right? Feed the children. I remember that, bro. Right. So I go to school on um, Brother Flex. And what's the first thing I do? I pick on this African kid, chase this kid home. I used to chase this kid and his brother home every day, bullying these kids because I thought they was less than me. This Don't, don't mm -hmm. you know this kid father was a doctor? Yeah, I wish oh, I could no. see him. Wow. Yeah, I wish I could see him and apologize to this brother. Like, like I just wish I could say I'm sorry, man, because I was confused as a kid. And I even, I even remember my mom, you know, because we lived in a house and we shared a house with African people and they used to cook food. And my mother used to say, I hate that food. Mm. I hate the way it smells. I hate these African people. They stink, right? And she even ordered like, $500 worth of flowers and candy right. and sent it to their apartment so they could pay for it. Like that, that was the hatred. But now today, my mom, she don't right. feel the same way. She don't feel the same way anymore because I, I let her know, like, you know, these are our people. And, you know, now she, she understands that. But before she had a hatred because even in her time, it was taught that Africans were less. And so this is why a lot of our grandmothers, they didn't want to associate with being called African. They are saying, well, we, mm. we, we, we native, we Indian. We don't mm. want to be that. And would you say the American media played a major part in that? Yes, a major, major part. Because even today, they don't, they don't want to show all of these things about Africa, how it really looked. Right. They want to send people over there and show the cannibals and, and all, you know, the dirty water, but show the other parts. I dare you. They're not going to do that. Now, this mm. right here is the quest of the Western world. Yes. And they this, this lays a clear distinction between Africans and, I mean, Negroes and Indians. So this is the quest of the Western world. And it says... In order, let's go to the top. Fray Marcus, the Frenchman, was well fitted for such an enterprise. He had the courage of a high order and vast experience. He had been with Pizarro in Peru, had marched every foot of the way from Guatemala to the city of Mexico, knew a half dozen Indian tongues, and had labored might mightily in the cause of the Indians. On Mendoza's Request he left New Spain in the spring of 1539, taking with him a guide, Esther Vanico, the Negro slave, who had accompanied Cabeza de Vaca 
and one and was one of the four survivors of the Nevez expedition. So it's showing you right here that Negroes and Indians are not the same. They're not the same. And now um, another major thing that they want to run to is the Racial Integrity Act. That's the that's their big thing. Walter Plecker, he misclassified us. But that was only in Virginia. That was only in Virginia. If you don't believe me, just um, research Richard Loving and um, Mildred, Mildred Jeter. All, they moved to Washington, D.C. to get married. If it was if the, if the Racial Integrity Act was everywhere, why why were they allowed to go to D.C. to get married? And the Racial Integrity Act clearly shows that colored people and Indians are not the same. It says, in any large gathering or school of colored people, especially in the cities, many will be observed who are scarcely distinguishable as colors. These people, however, are not white in, in reality, nor by the new definition of this law, that a white person is one with no trace of blood of another race, except that a person with one sixteenth of the American Indian, if there is no other race mixture, may be classified as white. Their children are likely to revert to the distinctly Negro type. So it clearly shows Negroes, Indians, and whites. And the Racial Integrity Act was basically the one drop rule. If you got one drop of Negro blood, African blood in you, that makes you a Negro. Wow. So when they bring up the Racial Integrity Act, the Racial Integrity Act debunks you because just read the act. It it says Negroes they and Indians. Right. They lose. They lose in that argument. Now we got DNA. Patterns of genetic ancestry of self-reported uh -oh. African-Americans. Genome wide ancestry estimates of African Americans. Now, gen genetics. Now they would deny this. You know they run from um, DNA. Show an average nice. proportion of seventy three point two percent African, twenty four percent European, and zero point eight percent Native ancestry. So you're not. You got way more African. We find systematic differences across states in the U.S. and means ancestral proportions of self-reported African-Americans. On average, the highest levels of African ancestry are found in African-Americans living in or born in the South, especially South Carolina and Georgia. Now, this, wow. brother, brother um, Flex, let's give me a second to get some more water. Two seconds. Yes, sir. You got it. Man, you're gonna need some water the way you cooking. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a now I live in Colum I live in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, this guy right here. Now, this is gonna prove that DNA testing is real for the DNA deniers. Now, this this brother, you know, he 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 harmed, I don't want to say those words that, you know, flag. He harmed the, a mother and a child and he, you know, he, he killed them. And they took a DNA test, right? Let's read it. It says, there were no known eyewitnesses to the murder of a young woman and her three-year-old daughter for four years, four years ago. No security cameras caught a figure coming or going. Nonetheless, the police in Columbia, South Carolina, last month released a sketch of a possible suspect. Rather than an artist's rendering based on witness descriptions, the face was generated by a computer's relying solely on DNA found at the scene of the crime. Whoa. It may be, yes. So they, they was able to create a a, a, um, a, fee, a face, a sketch based on the DNA. Because they always say, well, show me where DNA is used for, with, now this is where ancestry, so this 
really destroys the argument. It mm -hmm. says, mm -hmm. it may be the first time a suspect's face has been put before the public in this way, but it will not be the last. Investigators are increasingly able to determine the physical characteristics of crime suspects from the DNA they leave behind, providing what could become a powerful new tool. Now, wow. look what it says. Look what it says, though. I got to find that. Because it, it it really, it said what he was. Now, oh, there you go. I got to blow it up. There you go. Now, do y'all see wow. that? Wow. Look what it says. It says 92% West African, 8% Western, Northwest European. This is how he looked. And this is what wow. they got. That's what they look got. At, look at the power of a spit kit. They say on Twitter, spit uh -huh. kits are not ironclad. They say on Twitter that spit kits is not reliable. Exactly. Uh-huh. This this destroys that. It's over. <laughs> yep. It's mixed race studies, and y'all can check it out yourselves. DNA is very well real. They out here solving murders for this because of this. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Now a lot of how much time? What we what, 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 what we looking at? Oh, All right, oh, we, we got good. time, we, bro. We, yeah, we pretty we good. Time. We pretty good. Do you think? Pretty Do you good. Think? All right. So you know, a lot of people like to say, "Well, man, I'm Choctaw and I'm um Chickasaw," but a lot of your ancestors were owned by those people. There's a lot of um so-called Aboriginals when they do their genealogy. It shows that they were freedmen, that they weren't even right. Chickasaw at all. Right. They, just, they were owned by them. Right. And this is why, in fact, and this is why they never want to show any genealogy. Facts. I had one um Aboriginal, <clears throat> he showed me a picture of his mother, but didn't show me his genealogy. Oh no, that's right. it. But you're gonna show me what your mother looked like. Yeah. Bro, what happened to oh, say, you see my mother? Don't she look in? on Twitter? Yeah. You see what my mother looked like? Don't she look like she got Indian in her? Bro, you just yes. said you don't trust the internet. But I know it's, come on, it don't make no sense. Now it says, although the term enslaver for most Americans is likely to conjure up, conjure up the image of a white plantation owner, native tribes such as the Choctaws also enslaved people of African descent and had done so so far, more than a century before the Civil War, European traders and sellers introduced Choctaws to the enslaved Africans as early as the 1720s. By 1831, a federal consensus conducted in preparation for removing Choctaw Indians from the Mississippi River Valley to Indian Territory enumerated 7,963 Indians. 151 white persons and 521 enslaved people. These are your people. Though the people that's claiming freedmen, those are your people. They were owned by Choctaw. So if you do have that 2% Indian or that 8%, that's because your ancestors were, you know, intermingled with them. It doesn't mean that you right. are them. This is why they always right. say, Grandma said, we we got Indian in us. See, they miss it. They um misinterpret. They um misinterpret what Grandma said. She said, "Y'all got it in you, not you are it." Don't they do that, right. Flex? Don't they? Oh, even Kanye yeah, did it. All the time. He said, "How many of y'all grandmothers time. said y'all got Indian in you?" So what's the other I part? <laughs> Flex. And, and it says, not one. "Nope." I ain't find not one. And now I'm I'm actually doing genealogy for my mother and my aunt. But they say go to grandma. I'm helping out my, you know, I'm helping out my mother. So, and it says, and by the 18th century, and by the 1860s, enslaved people of African descent made up 14% of the population in the Choctaw Nation. 
enslaved people in the nation performed agriculture labor and when fluent in both English and Choctaw languages, frequently served as interpreters for the Choctaw enslaved, enslavers. So a lot of our ancestors was owned by the, um, the Anthro Indians. Now, in eight, in the first mention of a black person in a colony dates from 1633. Now, what this is going to prove that Indians and Negroes are not the same again. An English visitor published a true and lively description of New England for readers back at home. It includes an account of Indians who were worse than hurt when they came upon a black man in the woods. They sought help from a local farmer who finding him to be a poor, wandering black, -more, black man conducted him to his master. It is possible that this man was not enslaved, but an indigent server, servant. In any case, it seems clear from the Indians' reaction that black men were, were a rare sight in Massachusetts. So you got Indians who were scared of a black man. Within a year, the situation changed markedly. In 1636, 1637, the, Peacock, the Pequots fought and lost the war with the English who enslaved native people they took captive. The Pequots resisted enslavement. However, and frustrated that the Indians would not endure the yoke, the Puritans sent them to Bermuda in exchange for African slaves. Mm. Wow. Now, this is in 1865. Wow, two different people. I'm telling you. Now, everywhere you go, it's telling you that Indians and Negroes are not the same. They're not. Now, this is from A Prison Life in 1865. Let me blow this up. Now, he speaks, the guy speaks about, he's a prisoner, and he speaks about running into some Negroes on a plantation. And it says Saturday, 8th, 9th, December 3rd, this night was the first we spent in sleep since we started. It was acceptable indeed, though somewhat interrupted by a genuine African dance helped by the Negroes of mm. the plantation. So you had Negroes on a plantation doing an African dance. This mm. is what he saw. Why they wasn't doing it? Yet, on, why they wasn't brother. doing an Indian dance? Come on, brother. Why they wasn't doing an Indian dance? <laughs> Hold that L. <laughs> Black Indians on trial. Y'all on trial tonight. They on trial tonight, bro. They on trial Let's tonight. Go. Why you wasn't Let's doing an Indian dance? Let's go. Why you wasn't doing the rain dance? Yeah, why you wasn't doing the rain, making it rain on them? Now it says, this is from Black Indians. Right. And this is oh, this is going to be a this is going to be a checkmate. Let's go back. Let's just go to what she said. Let me blow this up. Now, this is. A lady named Rosa Faye. She was a black Seminole living in Brackettsville, Texas in 1943 and clarified her people's background for pioneer research. Kenneth W. Porter. Now, this is what she said. She said, we's colored people. I don't say we don't has no engine blood because we has, but we ain't no engines. We's colored people. This is what she said. Mm. She said, we, we are not Indians. Man, look. It's over. Bam, if you look, if you if you are loving why I care the truth, if you loving the receipts that the brother is dropping in his presentation, put a one in the chat. Go and support this brother. The brother's cash app is on the screen, man. Send the brother whatever you can send him. Support this brother, man. Support his research. See, this this brother, bro, this is a sniper shot right here. Bro, yeah. look, man, this, he cooking, man. Put one in the chat if you loving this presentation, man. Love him why I care the truth. And everything he doing. Let's go. 
Telling you, man, we gonna we gonna cook them. Oh, we got another one, and it says right here, this is from um Thomas Sumter, and it says the war in South Carolina had been su of such ferocity and so devastating that General Maltry declares even the squirrels and birds of every kind were totally destroyed. So it's chaos. And he describes a hundred mile drive through the woods of the low country in the autumn of 1782 as most dull, melancholy, and dreary. His plantation was a ruin and all livestock and furniture were gone, but his 200 slaves had resisted successfully all attempts to entice or carry them away and welcomed him with a barbaric African war song of welcome the war home while wow. the old soldier stood to greet them with tears running down their cheeks. Wow. Why were they singing an African song? Mm. Hey man, hey, hey it's, it's if, if if you are teaching that you just one hundred percent all of us are black Indians and there's no slave trade. Uh -huh. Hey man, we got you on the stand right now. You are on trial, and we are examining the evidence right now. We, it ain't no getting away from this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now mm -hmm. this is from red, yellow, and black. 1918 and the, he speaks about he said he tried to forget them but he could not he spoke about the voices to his friends at the methodist prayers meeting it was only a dream john stewart they said and they smiled to themselves as they pictured an uh, ignorant negro going forth along to the wilds of the northwest to teach the indians why is a Negro going to teach the Indians if Negroes and Indians are the same? Wow. What did the no. Negro think? What did the no. Negro think? <coughs> he said, they will only scap you for all your pains. They said, no one will give you money for such a foolish undertaking. So he had an idea to go and Christianize the Indians. This was a Negro preacher. His mm -hmm. idea was to Christianize the Indians. This was his dream. But somebody is telling him, that's foolish. Do you know what the Indians would do to you? They will scalp you. So this clearly shows you that Indians and Negroes are not the same. Well, John, mm -hmm. he said, your impressions and your sense of duty are so peculiar that no one will be give, willing to give you money for such a dangerous enterprise. But if you really feel that it's your duty to go somewhere northwest and preach to the Indians, obey what you believe to be the, the command of God. You cannot rest your mind in any other way than by thinking the attempt at least in starting your own journey. Then he and his friend prayed. And while they were on their knees, knees John Stewart became sure of what he would do. So he decided that he would go and, um, Christianize the Indians, the Negro. So wow. Indians and Negroes wow. are not the same. Wow. Now, this is going to be kind of, um, it's gruesome because it's a lot of these testimonies and stories. That's why you y'all got to get into, I love history, man. Like history love is it. just, I love it. Like I, I, I know my purpose now. It's like, it really dawned on me that these people's stories need to be talked about because it's just sitting there. You know, right. it's just sitting because, you know, they say the things that you leave behind could give you everlasting life because there's always right. somebody that's going to resurrect your idea or your thoughts. Mm. So as long, so I encourage, leave something behind, write a book for your kids, give them something to remember you by so you will live on through your words. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, it says... Do you still believe Negroes and Indians are the same? Now, this speaks about runaway slaves in Mexico. 
And it says, let me go back, my bad. The scarcely settled. Let me get to that part because I'm I'm know I'm kind of running out of time. Take your time. Take your time. All right, good. I'm you gonna take one. my time. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, sir. The sparsely settled frontier seemed to render escape relatively simple, but in fact, the route to Mexico was difficult, difficult and hazardous. The trip required courage. The semi-desert conditions proved too great an obstacle for many. Some Negroes fought against armed slave hunting parties, such as one led by Noah Smithwick, a well-known Texas pioneer. Others had to combat loyal slaves who tried to prevent their fellow blacks from running away. So it was blacks back then who tried to keep other blacks from being free. And that would be your typical Indian or wannabe Indian. If the Negroes did escape, into the semi-desert regions, further hardship awaited. Few slaves knew the route to Mexico. They often got lost and had to risk their freedom to ask directions. Julius Froebel told us a horrible scene he and his party discovered while traveling near the Devil's River in West Texas. They found what had been a fugitive slave camp littered with what appeared to be the bones of a man. They guessed that the Negroes had become lost, ran out of food, and one of the party was killed to nourish the others in their attempt to find freedom. Even if the former slaves knew the direction of Mexico, they might be captured by the nomadic Comanches or Apaches who roamed the semi-desert regions of the state. Captain Randolph B. Marcy saw two Negro girls who had spent months in the hands of the Comanches. The Indians had mutilated the girls more out of curiosity than torture, interested to know if the girls were as black inside as they were on the surface of their skin. The wow. Comanches had peeled off layers of skin, leaving the girls terribly scarred. Wow. So this is the Indians. These are the people that y'all want to claim y'all are. Mm. This is who you want to be? <laughs> really? Man. That's sad, man. That's no that's sir. sick. No, sir. That's sick. We don't want to be that. You, 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 I don't want to be that. Where I'm at. All right. I got some more. Now, this is from. This is a um from 1836, a massacre of the whites by Indians and blacks in Florida, 1836. Now it says right here, massacre of the whites by the Indians and blacks in Florida. So it clearly shows you that Indians and blacks are not the same. So when you do your genealogy and you see the word black, and they were fighting. Right, you are of African descent. That means that they were fighting together. So how can you be fighting together if you are the wow. same? Right. Don't make sense. <laughs> they don't. Now, this is from a book, A View of South Carolina in 1802. In the pursuits of agri agriculture, slaves were introduced into this state. In importations from Africa, soon supplied the planter with as many Negroes as he was able to purchase. So this is for you slave trade deniers. There's so many documents that speaks on this. All right. We need you to cook on that. We need you to cook on that. Yeah, yeah. So many. We're going to get to it. Now, this is from the Palmetto Stories, 1903. It was fortunate that South Carolina now had the ready, witted, resolute Charles Craven for governor. He proclaimed martial law, allowed no able-bodied man to leave Charleston, and no provisions to be carried out of it. He then organized an army consistent of the citizens of the town. The men from the plantations, some friendly, friendly North Carolina Indians, and some Negro slaves. So Indian and Negroes are not the same. 
everywhere you go. Mm. How many times I'm going to have to puzzle it up? How many times? Man. Now, this is the life, this 1849. You you heard of um, Uncle Tom. But Uncle Tom is the life of Josiah. His name was Josiah Henson. You know, he was a runaway slave. Yeah, he was looking for his freedom. And he ran away. When he ran away with his family. <laughs> and he was in the woods and he ran into a pack of Indians. Let's read about it. Mm. He said, we had not gone far, and I suppose it was about three o'clock in the afternoon when we discerned some persons approaching us at no greater distance. We were instantly on alert as we could hardly expect them to be friends. The advance of a few paces showed me they were Indians with packs on their shoulders, and they were so near that if they were hostile, it will be useless to try to escape. So I walked along boldly till we came close to them. They were bent down with burdens. So you see, he's not an Indian. The Institute right. at Dawn commenced 10 years ago with the view of <laughs> elevating the colored population and rapidly increasing the number by a sound of scriptural education without at the same time excluding either white people or Indians from its benefit. The color populations in Canada West was then and is now composed of almost entirely of fugitive slaves. So it, they not the same. Right. Now here it goes. He said, if they, now this is Josiah. He said, if they were disposed to run, I will follow them. We did follow on. And soon the noise was stopped. And as we advanced, we discovered Indians peeping at us from behind the trees and dodging out of our sight. And they were thought and and they thought we were looking at them. Presently, we came up with wigwams and saw a fine looking stately Indian. Now, let me go right here. He said the next day we resumed our march and found from the Indians that we were only 25 miles from the lake. So the Indians and the Negroes are not the same. Not the same. And they're mm -hmm. not the same. And I got a, I got a few more, but um, you know, I, I might have to wrap it up only because I got some, some things I got to do. But I, I want to take some questions if you got some questions and we could chop okay. it up. And, and, and also, um, because of the lack of time, um, Brother YK, um, if you can, we can do a part two about the slave yes. ship. They said that slave ships, uh, there was never no slave ships. So if you go oh, yes. to me, brother, I, will, I would like for you to come back for a part two on that portion. Um, Definitely. For the sake of time. So family, um, if you have any questions, like I said, I gave the disclaimer earlier, I gave context. This video was for those who said that we're all Indians. The slave trade never happened. We've always been here in America uh, and Negroes are Indians and there was never no Africans on the slave plantation. It was just all Native American Aboriginal people that have always been here in America, right? They got different names uh, for these people, aboriginals, um, they use Indian tribe names. They even say FBA, they even say foundational black Americans have always been here in America, didn't come from Africa, have no relationship with Africa, but our brother just has showed and proved with actual receipts and documentation, all that to be untrue. So if you um if you participated and listened to this uh uh beautiful presentation this powerful presentation um put your question in the chat put your question in the chat we will we will be glad to take any questions um if you can call, if you want to call in to the show we, we you can call in to the show um and also support our brother. I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put the number for the show in, but also support our brother. His cash app is on the screen at YK the Truth 35, and go ahead and support this brother in his research, man. 
You feel what I'm saying? This brother, he came and he and he volunteered his time, and he's also taking some time out to answer any questions that any of you uh, may have for for him, right? So, um, my question to you, brother YK, the truth is what led you down this path? What led you down this journey? Because I know it's not easy doing research, but the level of research that you have done showing primary sources, right? Not It is not too often where people are showing primary sources. What led you down this path? And when did you realize like, okay, I'm on to something, dear brother? Just um, looking at the internet and how this thing is spreading like a wildfire where everybody is, you know, creating these 30 second clips on TikTok with some spooky music. And then you got, you know, your people that you love. Cause I even have some family members that saying these things. I actually caught my, my found my aunt. She was um subscribed to one of the biggest aboriginals, um, Dan Calloway. And she was like, Oh, this brother's the truth. And I'm like, wow, like you no, he's not. So when I started seeing family members and how this thing was spreading like a wildfire, I said, now nah, I have to do something about it. But, and I'm not too big on conspiracies, brother Lex, Flex, but um, there has to be a hidden agenda because it seems like the channels that's combating these things, they don't get the proper views for that. You know what I, And then when you start talking about mm. now, if I was to make a video saying I was an Indian, I would get all the hits in the world. So I definitely had to um combat this. I had to, man. I had to do. I couldn't just sit back and let my people believe these things. And I will continue. And I got a book that's coming out in February, and it's very powerful. It's called wow. The Rise of the Black Pretendians. I'm not your African, and I'm already on a hundred pages. It's fire. Oh, man. you going to love it. Come on. I broke down. The slave ships is in there, too. I got the slave ships oh, in there. Man. I got grandma because, you know, when everyone, some, and I love, we love our grandmothers, but we got to remember nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, you know, because some of our same grandmothers who told us we had Indian in us drunk the Kool-Aid and went to right. Guyana. So we know that a lot of our ancestors are not perfect, but we love them still. But yeah, that's one of the reasons, um, Brother Flex, that I had to, you know, attack this stuff. Okay, so my next question to you is, so when you start doing your genealogy, because that's one of the things that they always ask, especially on Twitter. I don't know. Are you on Twitter? Yeah, I'll be on Twitter. Okay, yeah, because they, they always say, did you do your lineage? Did you do your genealogy? Because we standing on bloodline business, right? And all this stuff, right? So so when did you start actually doing your research with your family tree and DNA and all that stuff? I started doing my genealogy in about 13 years ago. Mm. I've started. I've been doing this for 13 years. Um, mine, I did a lot. I found so much. Just two days ago, I found my great, my, one of my great, great aunts, and I found how much she was worth. Mm. It, her and her two, daughter, her two daughters, they were worth $2,500. So I have all this information, wow. and I, I'm going to start doing genealogy courses for free. I don't want any money. I'm going to, because I believe that this is something that the government should give us, because this is something that was taken away from us. Like our, our language, our genealogy, that should be automatically free, you know, because that that right. came from the his that came from the history of America. Right. So why not give us back a sense of who we are? But yeah, right. um, I've been doing it for some time, um, brother Flex. Yes, sir. Uh, so how do you feel about when you hear this narrative and people say it strongly with their chest? that there were no slave ships. Where the slave ships at? We've always been in America. They lied to you. How do you feel about it when you hear these nonsensical arguments? Because me, I just, man, I, I just be like, just clutching um, my chest like, bro, what is going on? 
it, it, it just lets me know that they don't do any research when you're asking for a what. See, they always say where the slave ships at, but they never say where the wooden slave ships at. Because then you would mm. have to admit what material was it and why it's not still here as much as we're supposed to see it. What about wood mm. rot and wood worms and all of that stuff and being on water for about four months? I mean, you know, for four, four weeks. So then it's a different story when you ask for those things. But that's going to be in part two. And I'm going to get that ready for your presentation. It's going to be powerful. And I'm going to do it with Brother Lex, with Brother Flex, excuse me. Yes, sir. Man, yep. look, man, look, I'm going to tell y'all, look, brother, this brother is very professional at what he does. I mean, he, you know, from the time I reached out to my brother, you know, he was on it and already had his presentation uh, uh, ready to go. You feel what I'm saying? And just what he did tonight, you know, I can't even, I can't even wait for part two. I'm like, man, let's do this tonight, <laughs> man. But that's how, that's how powerful this brother is dropping this information, man. Because I'm from what I'm seeing on Twitter and YouTube compared to what I see in his videos, Ben's watching this brother videos. I had to bring this brother on the show to combat some of this info, this misinformation that is being spread out there. Because just as the brother said, you know, this is this narrative is running rampant. And now it got people like Kanye West and other people talking about they Native American. First, Kanye, you was a Hebrew Israelite. Now yep. you now you a Native American. You know, and it, it, it just, it's just baffling, man. It's just, I, I don't even know what to say, but our brother do has to have to go. Um, and we appreciate our dear brother uh, for coming on the show. And if you love the show and you want to see a part two, want to see a, of our brother YK The Truth come back, please put a one in the chat. And um, our brother will definitely come and, and, and drop some more of that heat. So before we go, I know you got to go, dear brother, but do you have any Final words that you would like to say before we end the show, King? Yeah. Um. Whenever you run into like a um a so called Aboriginal, ask them to show the genealogy. Like you, we gotta. You say genealogy is the key. Show the genealogy. Two thousand twenty four. We don't want to talk no more. We don't want to argue. We don't want to waste our times on these eleven hour lives arguing just show the gene genealogy and if, if you can't do that don't make the claim we gotta hold these um people up to the things they say if you say and um salute to um brother lucky and i appreciate you subscribing to um brother flex channel lucky is a, a good one and he's he's dropping some jewels too with the um with this but yeah sure, just um, let them do their genealogy and um, when can we do this on um, part two? Cause give me about about a week or two. Yeah, well, yeah, bro. Just give me just give me a date, and um, right. I'm gonna you know move whatever I gotta move around for my schedule. We can make it happen around this time. Is uh the same time around five p.m. my time, eight your time is yeah. perfect. Um, but I do, we do have a uh, one of our guests that have a question for you. Sorry, cause yes, I missed yes. it, but I I didn't want to just. Uh, leave the show without answering the brother's question. Um, he said, YK, the way I read Supreme Wisdom, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad spoke to the Indians. It suggests to me that they were a different group from the Africans. Have you ever read that lesson? No, I haven't read the lessons, that lesson, but I have read lessons and I'm, I'm kind of mad, brother, because I had some, I did like a labor work for like somebody that was a Muslim and they had some old teachings. And I wish I was able to have that right. I'm talking, they had the FOI suits. I was like, man. And they was giving it away. But at that time, this was years ago. I really didn't have a place to stay. So, I man, I wish I had them. Because, like, I'm not a Muslim, but, like, right. I'm big into the teachings. And I love the discipline. Wow. Because when you're a that. Muslim, you got to be disciplined. See, a lot of people, they talk about it. But when you a Muslim, you got to be about it. So don't right. step in. The, and that's why, yeah, man, salute to you, man. Salute to you as well, brother. And like I said, man, I've always looked up to you, man. You've been like a big brother to me in this. And uh, I use some of your material 
you know, in the past. And um, I think that, you know, you deserve your just due. I think you deserve, you know, your props, you know, for what you have done for the community because you've only given for the community. You've never been a, a taker of the community, a grifter. And we got a lot of these people lying to our people. You know, they're using other brothers and sisters for a come up. You know what I mean? And you've never been like that. You've always dealt with the truth. And that's why your name is YK The Truth, man. And that's why we love you over here at Malcolm Flex TV and support whatever you do, you ever, whatever you're doing. And, uh, man, let's get this part two scheduled, man. Got you. Yeah, I'm going to send you an email, and I, I got to leave you my number so we can chop it up behind the scenes. Okay, yes, sir. Most definitely, man. So we're going to let this brother go, man. Peace to you, brother. Right, YK peace, The peace. Truth. You have a blessed and beautiful day, my brother. All right, same to you, bro. All right, peace. Family, so there it is. There's our brother, man. That's a beautiful brother, man. Like I said, he's always been a stand-up individual within a community, man. And I reached out to the brother, man, because I noticed that this narrative is running wild, is running rapid on social media, is going crazy. Normally, I would do the uh, research and the presentation myself, but I had been watching this brother for years for a while and I've been seeing all of his recent work related to this said subject. And um, I felt that it was only right to bring this brother on and do this presentation, just as I would bring on a Dr. Wesley, a brother Demetri Muhammad, a Ilya Rashad, and the list goes on and on, you know what I mean? And I saw his dedication to this subject. I saw the work that he was putting in and, and the, the receipts that this brother is dropping. Right, not just ha up talking and having conversations that he disagree, but he's showing us line from line different uh, books. Right, he, he he's not even really showing a whole lot of articles like that, but he's showing actual primary source documentation. That's why I had to bring him on to have this conversation. So now, because. The brother, he, he, you know, he still got some more stuff that we haven't even presented to y'all. We're going to bring the brother back on for a part two to this show, man. And hopefully, man, if you didn't share this out, man, hopefully you share out part two so more people can be on this live stream and they can hear this, man. So, like I said, man, it was a great discussion. I appreciated my big brother for coming on and doing this um live stream and, and he came on and he did it very professionally you know um and he and he did a great job you know what i mean so this is your brother man i, I won't belabor the point i hope you all have a blessed and beautiful day this is your brother malcolm flex tv peace and assalamu alaikum And assalamu alaikum family. This is your brother Malcolm Flex TV from Changing the Black Narrative. And if you would like to join on to the Nation of Islam and accept your own and be yourself, please send me an email at malcolmflex19 at gmail.com. And if you would like a subscription to the Final Call newspaper, you can also go to finalcall.com because the final call newspaper has been within the black community for years and has changed and saved a lot of lives it has saved minds for example and if you would like to hear the latest lectures and webcasts by the honorable minister lewis farrakhan and his students the students of the honorable minister lewis farrakhan you can also go to noi Org. So if you would like to accept your own and be yourself, I will do my best to direct you to your local mosque and nearest study group. This is your brother, Malcolm Flex TV. Peace and assalamu alaikum.